Hello, welcome to the Introduction to Proofs video for sets on PowerSet. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to compute the power set of a finite set, and you should be able to evaluate the truth of mathematical statements of the form A is an element of the power set, and A is a subset of the power set. Everything here will only assume that you know sets. Our motivation is that the set 1, 2, 3 has many different subsets. For example, the set 1, 2, the set 2, 3, and the set 3 are all subsets of 1, 2, 3, and there are many others. Now, in math, we're often going to need an object called the power set of x that stores all of these subsets. So this is going to be especially useful when we're defining functions that take in a set as an input and output, say, the set's number of elements or its smallest element, Basically, if we want the domain or codomain to be sets, we usually use the power set to represent that. Now, this part, uh, this object is pretty confusing for a lot of people. It's quite abstract and it uses sets of sets. So let's start with a warm up. Write down all eight of the subsets of the set one, two, three. I've already given you three sets above. So write down the other five. Take a moment to do this now. So here are all eight subsets. There's the empty set, there are three sets with a single element, three sets with two elements, and one set with three elements. Now we get to the definition. Let x be any set, then the power set of x is going to be the collection or the set of all subsets of x. So if you want to represent this in set builder notation, you would write the power set of x is equal to the set of all A such that A is a subset of X. So you collect all of the subsets of X and put them into one set. Now this can be a little bit confusing because it is a set of sets, but that's totally allowed. We're allowed to put sets inside of them. Let's work through an example together. So let's look at the power set of one, two, three. That's what I asked you to compute on the previous slide as a warm up. So it has eight elements inside of it eight sets inside of it. Now let's look at a couple examples. The set one, two is an element of the power set. There it is. It's the one, two, three, four, fifth thing. Well, sets don't have order, but it's the fifth on my list that I've written. What about the set of one? Well, that's an element of the power set. Here it is right here. And what about the set one, four? Well, that's not in the power set because it doesn't appear anywhere on this list. Another way of seeing that is 1, 4 is not an element of the power set because 1, 4 is not a subset of 1, 2, 3. We only include things that are subsets, and we include all of the subsets. Now let's look at some other examples. Consider the power set of the natural numbers, which you can write in set builder notation as the collection of all A such that A is a subset of N. This is the collection of all subsets of the naturals, or the set of all subsets. So for these sets right here, which of them are elements of the power set and which of them aren't? Take a moment to answer this now. Well, the first one is an element because one, two is a subset of the naturals and the power set of the naturals contains all subsets of the naturals as elements. What about the collection of all evens? Is that a subset of the naturals? Yes, the collection of all evens is a subset of the naturals, so this set is one of the elements of the power set of the naturals. And what about this third one? Is this an element of the power set of the naturals? No, because it's not a subset of the naturals themselves, and we can see that because minus one is not an element of the naturals. So this is how this type of reasoning goes. We look at something as an element of the power set if and only if it's a subset of the, the set X itself, of this guy right here. So we're going from is an element of the power set to is a subset of that set. All right, let's do some more examples. As an exercise, compute the following, uh, the power sets of the following five sets. Take a moment to do this now, pause the video. 
All right, hopefully you've had a chance to compute these power sets. So the first one has four elements, the empty set, the singleton zero, the singleton one, and, this, and the set zero one. B is very similar, it's the set with the empty set, set containing three, the set containing four, and the set containing three, four. For C, we've already basically done this. This will also have eight elements. Now we're going to get to the set just with two. Well, what are its subsets? Well, we can take everything or we can not take two. So there's only two choices here. And now what about this last one? Is anything a subset of this? Well, yeah, the empty set is always a subset of it. So that's the only choice. Now let's take a moment. Do you notice any patterns or similarities or observations about these things? Take a moment to think about this now. So here are a couple things that I noticed. The empty set shows up in all of these. I also noticed that um, when you have only two elements, you get the same number of, uh, of, of elements of the power set. So this set had two things, so the power set had four. This had two, this had four. I also noticed that the number of elements was always a power of two, four, four, eight, two, one. I noticed that the set itself was always the, uh, in the power set. Zero, one, two, zero, one, two. The set just two, the set just two. Empty set, empty set. And another thing I noticed was that if one set had more elements, like this one has zero, one, two, but this one only has zero, one, then they compare very nicely. See, all of these ones are inside the bigger one and it has additional elements. So if A is a subset of C, it seems like the power set is a subset of the power set. Another thing that we can notice is here's zero one and here's just two. How does that compare? How do those two power sets compare to the power set of zero one two? So how do these two sets compare to this big one? Well, I can't just take the union of, of this power set and this power set and hope to get this long one because this has five things, sorry, this has four things, this has two things, so it do definitely doesn't reach this full thing. So it looks like power sets and unions don't play well together. All right, let's see these written down. So if X and Y are sets, if X is finite, then the power set has a, a number of elements equal to two raised to the power of however many elements the other one had. So this is uh, for cardinality. This is how many elements a set has. So a power set always has a power of too many elements. The empty set and the full set are always elements of the power set. If X is a subset of Y, then the power sets also behave that relation, respect that relation. And finally, if you take the power set of a union, it's not equal to the union of the power sets, typically. I mean, for some sets it is equal, but for the large majority of sets, it's not equal. All right, you should be able to prove all of these statements. Maybe this first one is a little bit tricky but the other three you should be able to prove. All right, let's look at one last example, which is to help understand the difference between is an element of and is a subset of. So in this whole example, we're gonna use x is the set square root two, pi, and the integers. Take a moment to answer these three questions. Okay, how many elements does x have? Well, it appears to have three elements the number square root of two, the number pi, and the set of the integers. Now remember, you're allowed to put sets inside of sets, and this behaves like one thing. It doesn't behave like all of the integers. So x has three things inside of it. How many elements does the power set of this set x have? Well, since x has three elements, the power set will have two to the three many elements. So it'll have eight things. And finally, which of the following are elements of x, elements of the power set of x, or subsets of either of them? So here are six things. Well, 
the elements of x are pi and the integers, pi and the integers. There's no square root 2 here. Now, which of these are subsets of x? Well, x and the empty set are both subsets. Just pi, that's a subset. And pi integers is also a subset. So now if we know this, what are the elements of the power set of x? Well, it's the exact same as the subsets of x. Subsets of x are elements of the power set. Let's take a moment to reflect. What's the difference between x is an element of a and x is a subset of a? What is the difference between x is an element of a and x is an element of the power set of a? What is the difference, if any, between x is a subset of a and x is an element of the power set of a? Write down a function that takes as an input any subset of force 5, 6 and outputs the number of elements it has. What is the domain and codomain of this function you wrote? Thank you very much and have a great day.